Hi guys and welcome to another chip technical tutorial. In this edition I want to talk about using the package known as MOBA Xterm. Now this is going to apply to you if you're running Windows as your PC and you have a chip device that is network connected. So the notion here is that MOBA Xterm will provide a graphical environment to the chip environment running on your PC. So the the idea being that you can run MOBA Xterm on your PC, run a command on MOBA Xterm, and then suddenly you will have your chip desktop, your whole chip graphical desktop presented to you on your PC. And then you can interact in, interact with your chip through your full-size monitor, your full-size keyboard, and your regular mouse without having to have multiple keyboards and multiple mice. Uh, also has a host of debugging capabilities and all kind of features. So let's get into it. <coughs> Excuse me. So first of all, uh, MOBA Xterm, there's the URL there, mobaxterm.mobatech.net. Go to this web page, click on the download button, and then there's a free and a professional edition. If we're just hobbyist users and we're only going to run one and we want to evaluate MOBA Xterm, then the free edition will be fine. Obviously, if you're a corporate user or you need extra features, etc., uh, etc., et then the professional edition might be what you need. But I'm going to constrain myself just to the free home edition, which for my purposes uh, has been just exactly what I needed. So we download this, we install it as a Windows executable, and then when we run MOBA Xterm, up comes a window like this. Now I've used it before and I've got some settings. Uh, it remembers my previous connections, remembered my previous connections. But uh, the notion here is that from here I can start a session, and the session is my connection to my remote chip. Now, we've got many, many ways that we can connect to the uh, chip device, SSH, Telnet, various others. So first of all, I select SSH, and I'm going to connect to the device called, well, not the device, I had to look up my IP address, so my IP address for my chip is here, and I gave it a static IP address, so I would always be able to find it. So that was 110, 192.168.1.110, specify a user ID and its chip and then hit the OK button and now we get a prompt for chip's password which of course by default is chip. I log on, it asks do I want to save this so I don't have to give the password next time and voila! Now I've got a login window here to my chip. Now this desktop you're seeing here is my Windows PC. So I've got a, a, an SSH session into my chip and if I wanted to I could open up another one and uh, 192.168.1.110 specify the username chip connect to it and now I have two tabs both of which are connected to my chip. Well, that's great. That's that's a great start. I mean, if that's all there was to it, then I'd, I'd be happy already. Now, notice over here this directory structure. This is the directory structure as found on my chip. Now, if I create a new directory here, let's call it uh, video temp. That's created a new directory there. And now on my chip, there is the video temp directory. Well, that's good. That's wonderful. Now, if I was to drill in there and create a file, uh, vi hello, hello, save the file, come back here, refresh it, and refresh it. How do I, how do I refresh it? I go up, go back down. Oh, I created it in the wrong folder. <laughs> so I created the file hello in chip. Let's move it into my temporary directory. Um, no, can't do that from there. Let's move it into my temporary directory. Uh, video temp, da, da, da. go into video temp, and there it is. Now, that's all very well, just a nice graphical interface. You can get that easily. But if I was to drag and drop files, if I drag hello here and drop it on my desktop, what we'll find is that on my desktop, there is the hello file. So edit with notepad, 
and there's my text. So how easy is that to move files from your chip to your PC and vice versa? Really, really powerful stuff. Now, I've saved the best to last. Up here is this button called X Server. So I run the X Server command and up comes a blank X Windows X Server display. Nothing to be seen in there. Go back to chip and I created a shell script so I can remember what it was that I want to run. Run x.sh. There we go. There's a command called xfce4-session. And what that will do is that starts the chip desktop environment. So if I run that in my SSH environment, which magically knows all about my X server, if I run that and then flip back to my X server window, we see the chip desktop starting. Give it a few seconds, let it warm up, let it connect, talk amongst yourselves, and now we have our fully fledged chip desktop connected to my Wi-Fi network, etc., etc., and we're ready to go. And the performance of this is excellent, excellent, absolutely fantastic. So from here, I can do all the usual things that I can do on chip from a TV and a connected monitor. So now I just have my array of chips just sitting in the back room, network connected, powered on, and now I can just connect to them and do all my work from my PC desktop, all through being able, all through just downloading this one mobile Xterm tool. Now there are a wealth of other opportunities. Um, when I've uh, finished uh, my sessions here, it remembers my sessions so I can come back to it and just double click it again and I've now got a new connection. So it remembers my sessions. That's wonderful. I can ask it to forget them again later if I need. Um, I can create new types of sessions. So for example, I can connect can create a serial session. Now that will use the serial port of my Windows PC to connect, well, basically to provide a terminal to the serial port. Now the serial port could be the serial port of your chip. So if you're doing some low-level kernel debugging or something equally low-level where you might not be able to get networking or something else going, you can always connect through your shell here. And we've got FTP and VNC and RDP and the list goes on and on and on. Truly a fantastic application this. So where one might have used PuTTY before to do serial or VNC server to, to do VNC and FTP to do file transfer, I am just so enamored with uh, uh, mobile X term here that I wanted to pass that on. And again, the website for mobile X term is just Google mobile X term and uh, you'll get to it. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to making more chip technical tutorials in the future. Thanks guys. Bye bye.